information system security. Now, when we say information system security, now there are threats to system security. Okay, threats, things that would um, that would um, work against information system security. Now, the first thing we talk about here is privacy and secrecy. What is privacy? Privacy is the ability of an individual or group of um, seclude or group to seclude themselves or information about themselves and thereby reveal themselves selectively. That is privacy. When you say privacy, now when you say privacy, it means the information about you is kept somewhere. Okay, but all you are doing is you are making sure that it is selected information about you that is being given out to others. That's privacy. Do you understand that? What we are what we are saying is okay. Look at it. Look at as as you are now. There are so many things about you I don't know. Okay, I might know your first name, your last name. I might not know your age. I might not know your place of birth. I might not know your home address, okay? Now, it is what you want me to know that I will know. If you don't want me to know your age, if I ask you your age, you might even tell me 17, even though you are 45, okay? So, that is privacy, meaning you are only allowing the little that you want the public to know about you. That's why when you go to, when you sign up for most um, social media, platform when you sign up you they, they will talk about our privacy terms and most of us we don't bother to read those terms because one they are voluminous they are long you 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 just tick you just tick they will tell you check this test box if you have actually read our privacy term because they know you will not need it too if you really, I believe it's actually with you Understand? Uh, not, not necessarily. There are some things that can be disturbing. No, no. Seriously, there are some things that when you read in those no, private, no, privacy terms, you will feel like, oh, am I going? To, do I need to sign up for this? But most times, basically here in this part of the world, Africa, here, we don't even bother to read. We just click. Oh yeah, Facebook. Oh, my life is in your hand. Piam. Okay. Now, so that is why there is a lot of um. Court injunctions, there's a lot of suing these days. Whereby you see people they sue social media player owners. You can see that even currently, Hero, America, and so on, they are battling Facebook. That okay, you have breached your privacy time. Whereby you see information about people were being used from Facebook by other companies. Okay, so that's privacy. Now, what is secrecy now? When we now say secrecy, secrecy involves norms about the control of information, whether limiting access to it, destroying it, or prohibiting or shaping its creation. Secrecy norms are embedded in road relationships and involve obligation and right to withhold information, whether um, receive procal or singular. What we are saying is, when you now come to secrecy, it's like you are saying you are you are you are you are swearing an oath. Say, okay, the information about this particular person will only be used for this particular purpose, and we are not going to use it for this other purpose. That's why sometimes you will see if you are filling an online form, they will tell you, they will tell you, uh, be rest assured that your information will not be what will not be used for any other purpose other than what is intended for okay so there will be secrecy and there will be privacy now the boundaries and content of what is considered private may differ between different cultures and individuals but they share basic common themes Privacy is sometimes related to anonymity. Yes, some people like to remain anonymous. 
Now, the wish to remain unnoticed and unidentified in the public realm. When something is private to a person, it usually means there is something within them that is considered inherently special or personally sensitive. Okay? So, we are still talking about privacy, which is there is something you are trying to protect. Some people, they don't want you to know about their age in order to protect their self-esteem. Oh, so she's Omokekere, so she's a small girl. Do you understand? Okay? Some people, they don't want you to know their home address because they don't want intruders, they don't want disturbers, and so on and so forth. Now, privacy and secrecy in business. Now, the above description can be applied in business. Businesses have the right to protect their assets, both tangible and intangible. Processes, information, and trade secrets. They have the right to use them in a legal way in order to generate profit from their enterprise. Now, one key asset within organization is the information system and associated content. Information system security is therefore critical and the key objectives are as follows. Now, before I read what those things are. Now, we are saying in businesses, there are also privacy and secrecy. Okay? That's why you will see most times, they will tell you they will, at, at, the, at the back of Coca-Cola bottle, you will see all rights reserved. They will tell you that the, 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 the Coca-Cola logo is a what? A copyright of Coca-Cola bottling company, which means it must not be used by any other company. Am I making sense? And if you try it to use it, you are gone for. Because they will kill you with legal uh, issues. They will just sue you to court. And they will win. Because this thing is reserved and remains the property and right of Coca-Cola. So if, if you are to use this logo, you must go to Coca-Cola and request for it. You pay a whole lot for it. That's why we say sometimes it is used to generate profit for their enterprise. Okay? Now, we said the objectives are confidentiality, which is requires that the information in a computer system can be accessible for reading by authorized parties only. This type of access includes printing, displaying, and other form of disclosure, including simply revealing the existence of an object. Another um, objective is that integrity. It requires that computer access can be modified by authorized parties only. Modification includes writing, changing, and changing status, deleting, and creating which means information in that particular system can only be updated by selected few. That is integrity. The last one, which is availability, means requires that computer system resources are available to authorized parties as and when they are needed. It means the information in it will be what? They will be able to view the information anytime they want it. Now, what is security? When we say security, information system security incorporates the protection of computer system and the data that are stored that they store. So, when you say security, you're actually talking about securing the data in an information system. Now, some of the major risks are as follows. There is always human error, technical error, natural disaster, sabotage or criminal damage, deliberate corruption, the loss of key personnel, and the exposure of system data to unauthorized use users. Those are the major risks that information systems are prone to. Now, when we talk about human error, we are talking about individuals that make mistakes. Sometimes you, you notice, or oh, maybe someone is trying to key in a particular data, and instead of putting A, he or she puts double A. 
that could be an error and it can affect the operation of the organization okay now another one is the technical error technical error in the computer hardware the software or the computation list can result in loss or corruption of data oh maybe suddenly the hard disk breaks down or suddenly one memory a ram just stop working and so on and so forth those are technical error natural disaster also maybe there is a tsunami there is earthquake there is tornado and so on and so forth now sabotage or criminal damage systems are also exposed to risk from criminal damage or simply theft okay you see that people just come in maybe they have you have a particular information about them that is so so what incriminating and they will look for ways to purposely damage your IT system, your information system. Then deliberate corruption also. Some people might purposely corrupt the information on your computer by exposing the data to viruses. Okay? We said hackers may also gain entry to a system and deliberately alter or delete software or data. Now, another one is the loss of key personnel. Sometimes in a company whereby there is one person that is the, the foreman in the IT department, is the, is the almighty, is one that does everything. So if some another company just entices him with money, maybe you were paying him 5,000 naira. Then another company says, okay, every month we'll pay you 15,000 naira. I will still give you a uh, transport allowance. Then it goes. So after leaving your company, you have actually lost someone that's valuable to your information system. Now, the exposure of system data to unauthorized user, for example, hackers and industrial espionage. Okay? Other risks include recorded keystrokes or stolen password, spam and phishing, harvesting and selling email addresses and passwords, accessing restricted personal or client information, and illegally distributing music, movies, and so on and so forth. There are lots and lots and lots. Okay, you can just read for them. So, how do we manage the security risk? So here I'm at the management of um, security risk. An organization must take measures to eliminate or reduce information security risks. A risk management process should be established which will involve one, identifying the risk, identifying risk to system security, evaluating and prioritizing the risk, and developing controls to avoid the risk or control the risk within acceptable limits, then implementing the control and monitoring their effectiveness. So what we say in essence is, the way you manage risk is, the first thing is, you will find out if there is actually a risk. So if there is a risk, you have actually identified that, oh, there is risk. Now the next thing is, you now evaluate and prioritize the risk. We said each risk should be measured or quantified. Typically, each risk should be assessed according to one, the probability that an adverse event or incident will occur uh -huh. and the severity or size of the loss when adverse events occur. So those are the ways you assess, you evaluate the risk. Oh, we are okay, there is a risk. Number two, this risk can it lead to an event, a damaging event. That's one. If it can lead to a damage, event, now what is the magnitude of the damage? Okay, what is the magnitude of the damage? Now, the other thing is now you now develop control for that risk. Now, measures for managing the risk should be decided for each risk where some control action is considered necessary. Risk control measures should be designed to one, avoid the risk entirely, or reduce the probability that the risk will occur, or reduce its impact if it occurs. You can see the three things. Those are the three kinds of control you can do. 
like okay, let's avoid the risk. The risk must not even must not even occur. Must not even happen. Two or this risk will happen. But what is the probability? Let us reduce the fact that it will happen. Okay, so we are now having a instead of having an hundred percent chance of the risk happening, let's have a 50 50 chance that the risk will happen. Okay, now the third one is okay, let us let's say okay, in a situation whereby the risk is inevitable, the risk will happen, but let us reduce the impact of the risk. Okay, so that is now, uh, so that's what we talk about. We said there are various methods of managing a risk. We talk about risk avoidance, risk transfer, risk reduction, risk acceptance, and so on and so forth. So let's talk about risk avoidance. According to the name, you are trying to avoid the risk. You don't want the risk to what? To happen. That's why you say, oh, if you don't want, uh, if you don't want to get cold, Okay, for example, I'm just thinking, oh, if you don't want to have malaria, don't expose yourself to what? To mosquitoes. So that is risk what? Risk avoidance. Because I don't want to have malaria, so I will not expose myself. All I will just do, I will keep all mosquitoes that is in my house. And I will not go outside at night to go and sleep. That's risk what? Avoidance. Now, when you say risk transfer, we say risk can be transferred so that someone else bears the risk of any loss that may occur. For example, the risk of providing inadequate physical security for a computer system can be transferred by outsourcing the task of providing security to an external security service firm. So, you are transferring the risk now. You have a company. All you do is, okay, you have a business center. Okay? Now, you now say, okay, I want to employ or I want to employ the service of a security, IT security company. So instead of you bearing the risk of data loss, that company will be one bearing the risk. You are paying them to bear the risk. It's like you having a bodyguard. Why are you having a bodyguard? It's because you are scared of being shot. Okay? So your bodyguard should be ready. To what? To receive bullets for you. Am I making sense? Your bodyguard should be what? Should be ready to receive bullets for you. That is risk transfer. You are transferring the risk from your own company. So all you just need to do, just operate your normal operation. You don't care if there will be virus attack. You don't care if there will be hackers. It is that security company that will to be their own thing. And you must not have virus attack. So they must do everything to prevent you from having virus attack, but you are paying for it. So that's risk transfer. There is risk reduction. Risk can be reduced by taking suitable control measures. For example, the risk of losing important data is reduced by backing up the files for a computer system every day and storing the backup copy off-site or in a secure fireproof safe. So, you are reducing the risk of losing your data. You know, okay, you are going to lose data if you are not careful. But you want to reduce the risk, you will do what? You back up. Okay? You do back up every day. Now, there is risk acceptance, meaning, oh, risk will just come. I surrender. Or just cash me. Okay? You are saying, this means doing nothing to avoid or reduce the risk. This approach is recommended only for insignificant risk. Measures to reduce risk should only be applied if the benefit from the control measure exceeds the cost of applying the control. So, if you don't have big data, if you don't have data that are worth something, so why are you spending so much money for risk avoidance? and risk reduction okay so that's what we are saying here sometimes most of us we have laptops we don't even care if virus attacks our laptop because we know the only thing i do on my laptop is just to type my school project and watch films 
So, why am I installing antivirus? Okay? When they tell you an original antivirus is 15,000. So, why will I spend 15,000? If, if it's corrupt, I will just format it. I'll go to one engineer, give him 2,000 error, format it, reinstall it again, and I'm done. So, that is risk acceptance because you know it, it is it's not really affecting anything. So, imagine of their customers in a database, the amount of money in their account, the amount of money withdrawn, the amount of loan the bank has given out. Imagine such bank being attacked by virus or being attacked by hackers. Do you know what will happen? They will lose billions of Naira. Why? Because the data is money to them. So if they spend 100 million Naira on data security, it is what? It is worthwhile. Because of the magnitude and the value of data. Are we making sense? So that's what we are saying. So banks can never operate the uh, risk acceptance. They will never. They will always operate on the risk avoidance level. Even sometimes they will do risk reduction, but it will not be as risk avoidance. They will always want to avoid what? Avoid the risk. So, uh, here we talk about physical and logical access control. Now, what is physical and logical access control? When designing a risk management system to deal with computer risk, it may be useful to think of the control in the system as consisting of two levels or layers of control. One, the physical control and logical control. Now, when you say the physical control, you are talking about controls. We said the physical controls are the physical measure to protect the computer systems, such as putting locks, where you put padlock by the door of the IT department. That's the physical control. Where you are putting bars, like uh, burglary proof, okay, into the windows of the IT, IT room. That's the physical control. Now, logical control are control within the software. Now, all those control you now perform within the software itself now are the logical ones. Okay, like your password, like your encryption, okay, like firewall, and so on and so forth. Those are logical controls. Okay, most of us, even our phones, we, we have logical controls on our phones. I can't really easily access your phone because you have either you have a fingerprint uh, control or you have a password or you have a pattern lock and so on and so forth. Those are logical controls. Now, we said protection against physical disasters. Yeah, you can just read that and uh, you back up, you do all those things and, and so on and so forth. 